word of stillness. Be still, be patient. Be still, be patient. The art of stillness. I just want to say hello to her. I used to be her cab driver. My name is George Estes. <laughs> yeah. How you doing? Good. Everything is great. God bless you. It's so great to see you. You too. God bless you. Thank you. I haven't seen her in a while. All right. The art is stillness, y'all. They cut me off yesterday on some of the video when I ended up, um, I was at the lake trying to read some of the excerpts. They cut me off like 20, the last 20 minutes of the video. So I'm going to try to go over some of the stuff that they cut off. The idea behind nowhere. Choosing to sit still long enough to turn inward is that hard a simple one. If your car is broken, you don't try to find ways to repaint this chassis. Most of our problems and therefore our solutions, our peace of mind lies within. Then it goes to hurry around trying to find happiness outside ourselves makes about as much sense as the comical figure in the Islamic parable. Who? There go that parable. Having lost a key in his living room goes out into the street to look for it because there's more light there. And then in the words of uh, Shakespeare and Hamlet, there is nothing either good or bad, but thinking makes it so. And I had read something about, uh, it's not that people don't, I think it was in The Greatest Secret. It says something about, it's not that people don't like you, they dislike you or they like you. What they uh drawn off is the stories that they're telling themselves about you. Meaning they heard stories from other people they got stories that they got a belief system about you. So it's the stories that keep going over and over in their head about you. That's not really based on if they like or dislike you. But stories make people feel a certain way towards you. I read that, I think, in The Greatest Secret yesterday. So basically, this guy right here, his name is uh, uh, Iyer, Pico, Pico Iyer. Basically, what he was saying in his book, he's just basically breaking it down, saying most people ask him the question, should I go on vacation or where should I go? And he'd be like, nowhere. If you need a vacation from your everyday life, your everyday life is not the way you want your everyday life ran or or or, or played out. That's not your true calling. If you are really stressed out about going somewhere else. To be happy. Happiness is not a destination. Happiness is a choice that you make right now. I'm happy right now because I choose gratitude. I choose to be still and be patient. Sit my ass still. If I got to sit like this, no, I ain't going to be tense. I'm not going to have my arms folded. I'm going to be relaxed, sitting back, patiently waiting for my thoughts for my words, for my feelings, and for my actions to manifest the creativity that I'm bringing to the future. The future is right now. Right now is the future. Right now is our future. The future is not in your imagination only. Yes, it's in your imagination. But if it's in your imagination... Is right now. They say that the, the 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 most important moment to the to the doors to the, all the other moments, meaning this door, this present day door, is the door to all of the moments. Meaning, right now, you can think of a memory in your past. What the book was breaking down and said, okay, if you can think of a memory from the past, and you're doing it right now in the present moment. Is that memory then or is that memory right now? Let's let's go to the future. If you can imagine how something going to turn out or how you think something going to turn out or how you hoping tomorrow going to be or how you looking forward to the next week or the next month. 
If you're looking forward to any of this imagine, imagine, imagination, all it is your imagination. But when are you thinking it? You're thinking of the future right now in this present moment. So the past, present, and future is right now. Only thing you can control is right now. And what can you control right now in this gift, this present that God gave us? Your thoughts. These are the energetic. These are the energy. This is momentum. Whatever you think about goes out into the universe. It's going to be received by somebody or somebody's. And y'all in the universe, of course. What are you thinking about? Are you thinking about lack? Or are you thinking about something that's grateful, meaning abundance? Don't concentrate on lack. Everybody going to lack something. But if you concentrate on that, that's what your whole day going to be about. Meaning the problem. The lack is the problem. The gratitude and what you're going to uh, salute, the solution to the lack is the grateful, is the positivity, is the love, the energy, and the labor you're going to put out to fruition for manifestation. So everything that you think about, it comes back to you like a boomerang. So be aware of your thoughts. Be aware of awareness. You are the awareness. You're not the voice in your head. You are the controller of that voice in your head. But you are the alert, aware consciousness of a voice that you're thinking that has control over you, meaning your voice to tell you in your head, I don't think I can pass this test. I don't think I can ride this motorcycle. I don't think, now you ain't gonna use the word think. You just gonna doubt yourself, but that's not who you are. That's ego. That's worldly thinking. Get back to a higher consciousness. Get back to your spirituality. The art of stillness is being still is like seeing everything that's moving. I can be still and observe and, and understand everything that's moving. Light speed, sound speed, it don't matter. Everything is the opposite. If you, uh, it's like the word reverse psychology. When, when psychologists or psychiatrists or people try to use reverse psychology, they're giving you something to get the opposite effect of it. They tell you something just to get the opposite results. As above, so below. Everything is the opposite. Get y'all a couple more excerpts out of this book real quick. I just want to give y'all some of my top of the head. All right. Something about this novel. This was the idea behind this epic novel. The title of which is sometimes rendered as Remembrance of Things Past. We glimpse a stranger in the street, and the exchange lasts barely a moment. But then when we go home and think on it, and think on it, and try to understand what the glance meant, and inspect it from this angle and from that one, spinning futures and fantasies around it. The experience that lasted an instant plays out, oh wait, the experience that lasted an instant plays out for a lifetime inside us. It becomes, in fact, the story of our lives. So he just used that example that you can have a stare. Uh, you, can have, you can see a stranger in the street and get home and think about what kind of look was that guy giving me or that girl was giving me. So that whole situation from a stare, a two-second stare, turned out to be futuristic in your current day and it's got your wheels spinning about what did that look mean. So you have to practice and master the art of stillness. In the Bible it says, be still and be patient. All right, chapter three, alone in the dark. None of us, of course, will want to be in a nowhere we hadn't chosen. Think about jail, psych wards, uh, what they call the jail within the jail. Solitary confinement. Nowhere we hadn't chosen as prisoners or invalids are. 
whenever I travel, he's talking about North Korea to any of the world's clothes. Okay. Whenever he traveled to North Korea or Yemen to any of the world's closed or impoverished places, which is a lot of them out there, I see how almost anyone born to them would long to be anywhere else and to visit other countries with the freedom that some of the rest of us enjoy. From San Quentin to New Delhi, the incarcerated are taught meditation, but only so they can see that within their confinement, there may be spots of liberation. Otherwise, those in solitary may find themselves bombarded by the terrors and unearthly visitations that Emily Dixon knew in her still volcano life. He said, I once went into the woods of Alberta, Canada, and sat in a cabin day after day with letters from Dickinson, the poet famous for seldom leaving her home. Her passion shook me till I had to look away. The feeling was so intense and caged, her words were explosives in a jewel box. I imagine standing with the woman in white at her window, watching her brother with his young wife, Susan, to whom Dickinson addressed some of her most passionate letters. Oh, my darling one, my heart is full of you. None other than you is in my thoughts. In the house they share 100 yards away across the garden. So just a story that he broke down with the uh, Emily Dickinson. So check her out. The brain. This is from Emily Dickinson too. The brain is wider than the sky. Four, put them side by side. The one the other will contain with ease and you beside. Chapter four, stillness where it's needed most. The idea of going nowhere is as mentioned, as universal as the law of gravity. That's why wise souls from every tradition have spoken of it. All the unhappiness of men and women, the 17th century French mathematician and philosopher Blaise Pascal famously noted, quote unquote, arises from one simple fact that they cannot sit quietly in their chamber, unquote. And then they talk about Admiral Richard E. Byrd. He spent nearly, he, he go to the guy that did uh, Operation Paperclip, I think it was called. After Admiral Richard E. Byrd spent nearly five months alone in a shack in the, in, in the Antarctic, in temperatures that sank to 70 degrees below zero, he emerged convinced that half the confusion in the world comes from not knowing how little we need. Or as they sometimes say around Kyoto, don't just do something, sit there. Damn. Yet the days of Pascal and even Admiral Byrd seem positively tranquil by today's standards. The amount of data humanity will collect while you're reading this book is five times greater than the amount that exists in the entire Library of Congress. Damn, that's the internet shit. Anyone reading this book will take in as much information today as Shakespeare took in over a lifetime. Researchers in a new field of interruption science have found that it takes an average of 25 minutes to recover from a phone call. Damn. Yet such interruptions come every 11 minutes, which means we're never caught up with our lives. He said that interruption science have found that it takes an average of 25 minutes to recover from a damn phone call. What's up, Ariel Boutique? Ariel Boutique, salute. Instagram, salute. And then it's saying the more facts come streaming in on us, the less time we have to process any one of them. The one thing technology doesn't provide us with is a sense of how to make the best use of technology. Put it another way, the ability to gather information, which used to be so crucial, is now far less important than the ability to sift through it. It's easy to feel as if we're standing two inches away from a huge canvas that's noisy and crowded and changing with every microsecond. It's only by stepping farther back and standing still that we can begin to see what that canvas, which is our life, really means and to take in the larger picture. I'm going to leave it at that. We'll continue from there. Hey, this has been some excerpts from Chicago X, The Art of Stillness. God is love, love is God. Gratitude to God, you all. The artist still in the Chicago X. Gratitude to God, gratitude to God, gratitude to God. God is love, love is God. Gratitude to God, God is love, love is God. The art of stillness. <laughs>